Local news that matters on Local 22 News. At this place in history, we're in Burlington with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. Steve, what brings us here? So we're going to talk about this building that's uh, over our shoulder here. It was the law office of Warren Austin, a very famous senator from Vermont, and a lot of other really cool things that he did. So Amanda Gustin, who is the uh, public programs manager from Vermont Historical Society, is waiting for us over on the lawn of the library. So we're going to head over there, and she's going to tell us all about this guy. So Warren Austin was born in 1877 in Highgate Springs, and he graduated from UVM in 1899. And after that, he read law with his father, which is sort of a common way to learn law back then instead of going to law school. And he establishes his own law practice in 1917 in Burlington. And then in 1925, he moved to the building uh, that we see behind us, just down the street. His previous offices were right on Church Street, but he moved to this building um, with his law office on the second floor uh, of 215 College Street in 1925. But in 1931, the senator from Vermont, who at the time uh, was Frank Green, passed away, and there was a special election for senator. And he ran as a Republican, as every national politician from Vermont was at that time period. And he won that special election in 1931. And then he ran again when the term came up uh, in 1934 um, against actually one of the closest Democratic challengers to that point in Vermont history, he won his election by 3,500 votes. Austin had this strong interest in what happens beyond the borders of the United States. He had spent a lot of time in Canada as a young man. He had made that trip to China for business. And once he became a senator, he traveled a lot. Uh, he traveled all over Europe, all over the Middle East, uh, to China, the Philippines, to South America in just, just about a decade uh, of the 1930s. So he, he traveled a lot and he had a strong interest in foreign policy as a senator. So he's elected in 1931. Um, he steps, he ends his last term as senator in 1946 um, to take his next job. His next job is the reason uh, he's famous today. You know, he, he, he accomplished a lot as a senator. He represented Vermont very well. But what we really know him as and what he's famous for today is that he was the first official United States ambassador to the United Nations, uh, appointed by Harry Truman. He had to wait to finish uh, his term as senator because the position was created while he was a senator. Mm -hmm. um, he actually worked on the committee that developed some of the rules for the United Nations and argued strongly that the United States should enter the United Nations. Uh, and so he was appointed first official ambassador to the United Nations in uh, January of 1947. Just a few of the highlights uh, are the creation of Israel, uh, the Berlin airlift, um, the Marshall Plan, implementation of the Marshall Plan uh, in Europe, the beginning of the Korean War, uh, and the beginning of the, of the Cold War. Uh, so really important time to be in the United Nations and to be the United States ambassador to the United Nations. Later in his life, uh, actually in his farewell address, he said that once upon a time he was asked, does he ever get tired of all this talk? Does he ever get tired of all this just constant talking and talking and talking? And he said it is better for aging diplomats to be bored than for young men to, to die. He believes so strongly in uh, the cause of peace, uh, in the cause of diplomacy, of, of working together between nations um, to avert war. And he credited Vermont <laughs> with inspiring him uh, to, to pursue this path with his life. As a senator from the state of Vermont, I know that the people I represent, like the people of all of the United States, feel that in each day's newspaper headlines, they are reading the obituary of the Nazi regime. One hears the talk of the kind of peace we want. It is a peace that will encompass all nations, large and small, all nations who wish to work together to bring about security on an international scale. At this place in history, 